Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Sense, back with another fragrance video for you guys. Today I'm going to be going over five fragrances that I'm going to miss wearing in the upcoming seasons. Because right now we're about to transition into spring and then summer after that, which means that those really heavy winter fragrances, those beast mode performers, probably going to go back up on the shelf for another year. So in this video, I'm going to be going over five different fragrances that I'm going to miss wearing. Each one of these fragrances is going to be on the darker side of things, the more rich, deep, even resinous side of things. And that makes sense because you want that in the colder months in fall and especially winter. As I said, as we transition into warmer weather, these ones are not going to get any wear because I'm going to be wearing new fragrances that have just come out for review. I'm going to be wearing the fragrances in my spring list and my summer list. And I love these five, so I'm sad to see them go back up on the shelf. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this. Now, before I jump into this, I guess I should say that realistically, you could wear these whenever you wanted. If you want to wear these in spring, you can. If you want to wear these in summer, you can. Maybe you don't go as heavy as uh, you would in winter time. You don't want to spray these on 10 times in extreme heat and go choke out and kill everyone around you unless you're into that kind of thing. And then I guess go for it. You do you. But if you do have respect for your fellow man, and woman, that's not really a good idea. You should dial it back a little bit if you're gonna wear these in spring and summer. As I said though, with me having this channel, I'm gonna be wearing a lot of new stuff and reviewing that, and then I'm gonna have my spring and summer staples that I want to wear, you know, stuff like Green Irish Tweed by Creed, for example, and stuff like this kind of gets pushed back until it does get cold again. Let's jump into this with a Salvatore Ferragamo fragrance from their Womo line. And this is, if I had to pick one, my favorite from the line. I have reviewed this in the past, and I believe in that video I said that it was my favorite of the line as well. So this is one that just, as soon as I smelled it, I really dug it, and uh, my opinion hasn't changed on that at all. It's this one, Womo Signature. It has Tonka, coffee, leather, cardamom, and cinnamon as some of the notes in this fragrance. What a lot of people will associate the Salvatore Ferragamo Womo line with is that coffee. So in the original Womo, it was a tiramisu note. So it was very sweet, a very gourmandy, sweet kind of coffee note. This one does not have the sweetness quite as much as the original Womo does, but you do have a decent amount of sweetness still in here. This one has as well leather, as I mentioned, gives a nice little masculine touch. And then you've got those very uh, attractive spices in here, the ones that are easily worn, the ones that people just really seem to gravitate toward, the cardamom, the cinnamon. This one is inexpensive, so you can pick this up for very little for a full-size bottle, full presentation and everything. That's one of the things I like a lot about the Ferragamo Womo line is that you get these, well, in my opinion, cool bottles. Some people are going to say that these are tacky, and if if you think these are tacky, that's, that's fine. We can agree to disagree on that, but uh, you can pick these up, as I said, for a cheap price and get a good uh, presentation, high quality fragrance, good performance, uh, a lot of stuff to like about this line. And also this line of fragrances, getting off on a tangent a little bit, has something for everybody. So it's got casual life, more for maybe uh, spring wear. You have urban feel, which you could wear honestly about any time. It's one of those versatile blue type scents, but you could pull that off in uh, spring or summer pretty easily. Then you have Signature and the original Womo, which are going to be better for fall and winter. So you've got two there, Casual Life and Urban Feel, that are good for spring and summer. Then you've got Signature and the original, good for fall and winter. As I said, not quite as much sweetness to my nose as in the original Womo with that tiramisu in the original Womo, but Signature does have Tonka in there, which is going to provide a decent dose of sweetness in here as well. So there's my first one, Salvatore Ferragamo Womo Signature, solid fragrance for cold weather, good price, good performance, a lot to like about this one. Next up is an Isimiyaki fragrance. This is one that I talked about a few times on my channel. It's one that the first time I smelled it, right away fell in love with it, thought it was amazing, especially for the price, great bang for the buck. It's this one, Nui DC Pulse of the Night. 
Yeah, yeah, still love that one. Mm, really, really high quality for the price that you pay for this one, assuming that you're picking it up from discounters. It's got incense, tonka, amber, and vanilla as some of the notes in this fragrance. It does have a very slight touch of powder to it. Uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, it's not one of those fragrances that comes across like overly powdery or makeup-y or anything like that, but there is a touch of it in here. This is one, as I mentioned just a second ago, when I did a first impression on it, immediately, immediately blown away. I thought, wow, that is like five times better <laughs> than I was expecting it to be. Uh, one thing with Pulse of the Night though, if this is sold out at discounters or anything, like in the future, if you're watching this and it's sold out at discounters, don't pay insane prices for it because I picked this up for, I believe in the $50 range. And at 50 bucks, I think it's an absolutely killer buy. Just great, great everything. Quality, performance, the scent profile, everything. But uh, when this did sell out at discounters and it has done that back and forth, it'll sell out, they'll get them back. It'll sell out, they'll get them back. Uh, people on eBay will ask, astronomical prices for this. I'll ask over a hundred dollars. I've seen it up to like 200 bucks or something. Do not pay that price for Pulse of the Night. When I say that this is amazing, that it smells so fantastic, that the quality is there, well, the quality is there, but I'm saying all of this, assuming that you're getting it in that price range, 50, 60 bucks, okay? If you spend $200 on this, then there's a possibility you get it in and you go, oh, this wasn't worth $200. And that's why I'm telling you, don't pay that price for it. Pick it up in that 50 buck range. That's the sweet spot. If you can get it for less than that, you've got a great deal. But in that 50, 60 bucks, that's where I would feel comfortable picking this one up. Essentially, if you like fragrances that have that, that incense, uh, kind of dark feel to it with a good amount of high quality, uh, just rich, uh, semi-dense sweetness from amber and tonka mixing together and uh, vanilla as well, then check that one out. Absolutely, that is one of my favorite releases from 2019. It was number two, and uh, honestly, it could have been number one. That one, just awesome. And bummed that I'm not gonna wear it again for a while. Next up is a fragrance from Guerlain. It is Lidge L'Anson de Guerlain Extreme. So yeah, L-I-D-G-E, Lidge. And my bottle is this one. This is not how it will look if you buy it now. This is a vintage bottle, uh, which you can tell by the bottle shape and also uh, the black rim there. If you buy this fragrance new nowadays, it's gonna come in a bottle that looks similar to this one. This is Vetiver by Guerlain, obviously. Not the same fragrance, but if you buy Lidge new, it's gonna come in a bottle that looks like this. So if you do buy this fragrance, launched onto Guerlain Extreme, and it does not come in a bottle like this, if you're unaware of the differences in the bottles, if you're just getting into fragrances, I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of details, but if you buy Lidge, it's not gonna come like this. It's gonna come like this. Don't be alarmed. It's got cacao, patchouli, and star anise as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this one, in my opinion, one of the best bang for your buck fragrances on the market. Because from discounters, you can pick this up very cheap. Now there's also a, um, an Eau de Toilette version of this fragrance. This is the Eau de Parfum, so that's the Extreme, <laughs> L'Anston de Guerlain Extreme. There's also L'Anston de Guerlain, and that is the EDT. So either one of those work. In this circumstance for this video, I'm talking about the Eau de Parfum though. This one, very gentlemanly, very sophisticated. It's also got a slight touch, a slight touch of playfulness to it. And that's gonna be because of the cacao in here, the chocolate. Uh, patchouli also in here as well, and patchouli can come across chocolatey. Um, if you're familiar with a lot of patchouli fragrances, oftentimes the way that it's used will give kind of a, like a, a thick chocolatey vibe from the patchouli, and this has both cacao and patchouli, so. And then the star anise is really what kind of sets this off, makes it pop a little bit, gives it a unique kind of vibe because a lot of times you don't smell star anise in modern men's releases. It's not a note that's really in vogue 
at the moment. This is one that I use more for dressing up, more formal occasions, occasions where I want to come across more with an air of, uh, I guess, power you would call it, or sophistication, whatever. That's more when I use this one. It's not one that I use as much casually. A couple of these other fragrances I use more uh, on casual nights out. That one, I dress up a little bit. As I said, the quality on that fragrance on Lidge, very high, which is something that these fragrances share in common. And for the price that you can pick that up for, it's a steal. After that, a fragrance that I have reviewed in the past, it is this one, Halloween Man X, the newest in the Halloween Man line. This one, I did not have very high hopes for. I actually covered this, as I've said in the past, on This Week in Fragrance before it was officially released. I uh, talked about it on there. So this had been on my radar before it was even out at stores or out at discounters. And uh, when I finally got my nose on it, I was pleasantly surprised. It is actually a great fragrance. My favorite in the Halloween line by far. So what this is most well known for, at least to me, is the Blackjack Accord. And the Blackjack Accord is an accord that was made for this fragrance, which is essentially coffee, leather, and whiskey. All put together, that is the Blackjack Accord, and that's what really pops from this fragrance. Especially the roasted coffee. I get a bunch of roasted coffee from this fragrance, and it's actually one of my favorite coffee notes in fragrances, which is, uh, it's gonna sound weird, I guess, because at the end of the day, this is a, a $25, $30 designer. This is not an expensive fragrance. And I have many niche fragrances that cost five times, eight times, 10 times the amount of this fragrance. And um, I end up liking the coffee note here more than probably 90% of the other coffee fragrances that I have. Now you might say it's a more simplistic coffee note than some of the other fragrances that I have. I'm not gonna pull out you know, 30 fragrances and do a one versus one on all of them, but yeah, you could say that this is maybe a little more simplistic. I'll give you that. You could say that maybe this one comes across more synthetic than some of the more expensive fragrances. I'll give you that, but this one, extremely easy to wear in cool weather, cold weather. Very, very appealing. It's actually got a, a high compliment factor for me, believe it or not. My wife loves it. My wife's friends love it. Everybody that I've worn this around seems to really gravitate toward it and say, you know, that smells really good. What are you wearing? And it's just Halloween Man X. It's, it's just a $25 fragrance with uh, coffee, leather, whiskey, some sweetness in there from uh, from Tonka, some spice, and it just it just works. So yeah, maybe not the most cutting edge, the most sophisticated coffee note out there, but a darn good one. Performance on that for me, good as well. As I said, versatile and cool weather. You can wear it lots of different places. You can wear it lots of different ways. Compliment pulling, and it's got a lot of notes that I love in there. The whiskey, the coffee, you've got um, a little booze. The, the coffee, as I said before, comes across more roasted, like a, a roasted coffee bean is how it comes across. So it's got that little, that little edge to it, that little, mm, that little burnt edge to the coffee bean. Cinnamon, of course, easy, uh, easy to put in fragrances. People just seem to love cinnamon, especially in cooler weather. There's a lot going on with that fragrance that just just does it for me. So Halloween Man X, one that I am sad to see go back up on the shelf, though if I'm honest, I might bust this one out on occasion and just give it a spray here or there. And that's gonna take me to the last on this list. It's from Victor and Rolf, so you already know what it is, don't you? Yeah, you do. It is this one, Spice Bomb Extreme, though you could also just say Spice Bomb. The Spice Bomb Brothers, the Spice Bombs. Dark vanilla, tobacco, bourbon, and cinnamon, some of the notes in this fragrance. This one, as I have made mention on this channel in the past, to me, is basically taking the original Spice Bomb and improving that DNA. This one has a good dose of dark vanilla in here, and that vanilla is what really sets this apart from the original Spice Bomb. It gives it a nice, 
sweet touch, nice sweet edge, which I feel like the original Spice Bomb maybe was just missing a little bit. And interestingly enough, even though this is called Spice Bomb Extreme, it is not quite as assaulting on the senses as the original Spice Bomb is. Obviously, there's still a good amount of spice in here. It is named Spice Bomb, after all. So if there was a complete lack of spices, that'd be false advertising. And that's gonna be your cinnamon in here. Of course, also tobacco note, which is something it's gonna share with the original uh, Spice Bomb and bourbon as an official note in here as well. I believe it also has saffron uh, among other notes. But this one, as I said, basically take the original Spice Bomb, add in a good dose of dark vanilla in there, dial back the abrasiveness a little bit, and you've got, boom, Spice Bomb Extreme. Great, great performance on that fragrance. Lasts a very long time. Great projection as well. A big compliment puller. That fragrance, just a killer. There is a reason that Spice Palm Extreme has made so many different lists from so many different people over the years. There's a reason it has all these different reviews online, whether we're talking about on Fragrantica or Base Notes or YouTube or uh, written blogs, whatever. Spice Palm Extreme, just a killer fragrance. It gets the job done. It's gonna last, as I said, it's gonna project, it's gonna pull compliments, it's easy to wear. Uh, not a whole lot to hate about that one. In my opinion, of the entire Spice Bomb line, that one is the one to own. If you only get one Spice Bomb fragrance, again, it's my opinion, Spice Bomb Extreme is the one that I personally would go with. And that one, Spice Bomb Extreme, is going to wrap up this list of five different fragrances that I'm kind of bummed I'm not gonna be able to really wear until this coming fall or winter. As I said before though, if you love these fragrances or fragrances like these, you can still wear them in spring or summer. There's not a, a fragrance police force that's gonna kick your door in and punch you in the face and tase you and mace you and take all of your fragrances away and say, you know, you've been found guilty of wearing fall and winter fragrances in spring and summer. Uh, that's not gonna happen. Although it would make things a lot more interesting if something like that did happen or did exist. So at the end of the day, wear what makes you happy. That's what's most important though. Do try to keep in mind your fellow man and woman. Don't choke them out. Don't be that guy who has to spray your fragrances on 15 to 20 times, even though two sprays would have gotten the job done. That's just helpful advice. You don't have to listen to it, but people probably would appreciate it if you did. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. Let me know in the comments some of the fragrances that you are sad that you probably won't be wearing these upcoming seasons as well. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.